What occurs if there is no control of internet privacy? Once a well-liked global platform for casual talks with strangers, Omegle turned into a warning about the risks associated with oversight deficiencies. What the f It's my sandwich! It's a sandwich! <laughs> When it was first introduced in 2009 as a novel social interaction experiment, it soon became controversial due to its high level of explicit content and predatory content. I'm 16. Even though Omegle was successful at first, its failure to safeguard its users, especially children, finally contributed to its demise. <laughs> we'll explore the dark reality of Omegle's climb, the final end, and the lessons discovered along the way in this piece. Numerous platforms for global communication have been made possible by the internet, but few have garnered as much controversy and fame as Omegle. When Leif K. Brooks, then 18 years old, founded Omegle in 2009, it was only a basic chat service meant to connect people at random for individual discussions. Although it started out as a fun social experiment, the website soon developed into a hub for risky conduct, abusive activities, and offensive information. Omegle was popular at first, but as these growing issues went neglected, Omegle came under more and more criticism. This ultimately resulted in a drop in user confidence and ultimately its closure. This piece will examine the dark reality of Omegle's downfall and the factors that led to its eventual closure. the creation of a controversial platform. Leif K. Brooks wanted Omegle to be a site free from the limits of conventional social media, where users may connect and engage in casual chats. Users could check in and be paired with someone from anywhere in the world without having to register an account or supply personal information. The goal was to encourage chance meetings and conversations amongst individuals who might not otherwise come into contact. Although this idea was appealing, there were a lot of risks involved. Omegle's worst shortcoming turned out to be its anonymity. Because there were no safeguards in place to confirm users' names or ages, anybody could log on and view offensive content, even children. Because of this bug, it was challenging to regulate the kinds of talks that were occurring, which raised grave questions about user safety. The increase of inappropriate content. Omegle's user base became more diverse as it gained popularity. The site soon established a reputation for being a haven for offensive and lewd content. While many users looked for friendly discussions, some used the anonymity to participate in unsettling activities. Sexual content, harassment, and even exploitation became commonplace, and some people started targeting youngsters using the site. Omegle's low reducing guidelines contributed to these issues remaining ignored for years. Although user reports played a significant role in the platform's ability to identify inappropriate activities, this system was far from perfect many users, especially the younger and more susceptible ones, had negative interactions before they even had an opportunity to report them. Child protection advocates, educators, and parents were all alarmed by this lack of responsibility. The violence of minors and the participation of Omegle in the exploitation of children is among history's most concerning features. Children and teenagers may simply access the platform and be linked with adults because it doesn't require any kind of identification or age verification. As a result, a risky environment was established where predators might prey on trusting youth. Numerous complaints of kids being exposed to adult information on Omegle or being groomed or manipulated have surfaced over the years. A few predators recorded or collected pornographic content on the network, which they may subsequently sell or distribute on the dark web. Ineffective moderation and a lack of regulation made it challenging to deter or prevent these abuses. Law enforcement organizations have occasionally been involved in investigations into crimes that started on Omegle, but because the network was anonymous, it was difficult to identify specific users and hold them responsible for their conduct. This demonstrated even more how urgently stronger safety rules and guidelines on these kinds of platforms are needed. Omegle's struggle with social and legal issues concerns over Omegle's legal and ethical standing grew as reports of abuse and exploitation on the network gained traction. Governments all throughout the world, including child safety organizations, began advocating for stricter rules of services such as Omegle that provided unrestricted, anonymous access to the internet. The website has been at the focus of several controversy due to its insufficient protections against danger for its users, especially children. 
Following this, there were lawsuits and public outcry, with some parents and victims suing the platform for failing to take enough precautions against these risks. Omegle's reputation started to suffer as a result of this barrier of bad news, which transformed the once harmless chat room into a well-known emblem of online exploitation. The ethical issue was evident, whereas Omegle offered a forum for free expression and social interaction, it also gave predatory conduct unrestricted growth. The platform's administration had to make tough decisions regarding how to strike a balance between user rights and security requirements. Regretfully, their actions were frequently taken too little, too late. Efforts to regulate and moderate Omegle made an effort to respond to some of the criticisms, but its attempts were mainly fruitless. The site added a number of new features over time, one of which was a monitored chat option where users' chats were purportedly supervised by moderators. This method was far from perfect though, and it did little to stop the widespread inappropriate activity that was taking place on the website. Additionally, a disclaimer alerting users to potential risks and specifying that the platform was meant only for users over the age of 18 or those under parental supervision was added to the platform. Nevertheless, the majority of younger users disregarded or were ignorant of the risks associated with the site, and they kept coming. Omegle was widely criticized for not doing enough to protect its users even after these steps. The platform's design continued to place anonymity over accountability, and moderation remained slack, making it impossible to completely remove the harmful conduct that had come to be associated with the site. Social media's function and public reaction Omegle's problems came to light as social media expanded and sites like YouTube, TikTok, and Twitter gained influence. Influencers and content producers started sharing films of their adventures on Omegle, highlighting the raucous and frequently inappropriate aspects of the website. Even though some of these movies were designed to be funny or amusing, they also highlighted some of the site's less positive aspects. After these recordings went viral, Omegle faced further criticism from the public, with many people wondering why a platform of this nature was still permitted to exist. A boycott of the website was demanded by advocacy organizations and influencers, and social media campaigns advising parents to shield their kids from Omegle started to take shape. The administration of the platform was under increasing pressure to take action as the risks associated with it became more well-known. Omegle's collapse was accelerated when its reputation suffered, and it became a common topic of conversation in the public space. Global crackdowns effect on internet privacy The emergence of Omegle's shadowy side was supported by a larger worldwide push to combat privacy online and the online exploitation of weak people. Around the world, governments and regulatory agencies started enforcing harsher guidelines for online safety several mandated that platforms improve their moderation procedures, age verification systems, and accountability frameworks. New laws have been passed in nations including Australia, the United States, and the United Kingdom with the intention of shielding kids from offensive content and internet predators. These rules put more and more pressure on websites like Omegle to own up to the actions of their members and put in place stronger safety measures to keep people safe. Unfortunately, Omegle found it challenging to abide by these new rules because of its emphasis on anonymity. The core idea of the platform was to match up random, unsupervised discussions between strangers, however. This wasn't compatible with the level of supervision demanded by contemporary safety regulations. Omegle consequently found it difficult to adjust to the shifting regulatory environment, which finally led to its downfall. Law enforcement's work as Omegle's user base grew. More and more law enforcement agencies worldwide started to investigate the network more thoroughly. Police agencies from many nations started looking into incidents of child exploitation, cyberbullying, and other misbehavior that occurred on the website. In certain cases, law enforcement collaborated with tech firms and online safety associations to locate users who had utilized Omegle for illicit activities. But because the site was anonymous, it was very difficult to identify and bring criminals to justice. Law enforcement organizations persisted in pressuring Omegle to enact more robust safety protocols and assist with current investigations in spite of these challenges. Law enforcement's growing involvement in Omegle's operations has increased attention over the company's operations. The platform's credibility and dependability were further damaged when it became the focus of criminal investigations, rather than just being a matter of concern for parents and child protection groups. Omegle's a drop and final shutdown Omegle's downfall was coming, although slowly. As more secure options became available, the platform lost users over time, 
permanently harming its reputation. Millions of users were first drawn to it, eager to engage in conversation with strangers, but it quickly came to be associated with inappropriate behavior, exploitation, and a lack of accountability. The platform's closure due to a combination of new international laws, growing legal pressure, and public outcry was the last nail in Omegle's coffin. The growing demands for user safety and respect for internet safety regulations made the service unusable. Furthermore, it was challenging for Omegle to retain its user base due to the emergence of chat platforms that were more regulated and safe. The sad reality behind Omegle's shutdown serves as an alarming warning of the risks associated with unrestricted internet anonymity. The platform's demise was eventually caused by its failure to handle the mounting risks of exploitation and abuse, despite its original goal of providing a place for enjoyment and unplanned contacts. Omegle's experience emphasizes the value of online safety, particularly at a time when children and other vulnerable people are more frequently exposed to the dangers of the internet. It emphasizes the necessity of stricter control, stronger moderation, and a dedication to safeguarding people from damage. Future online platform development will probably be influenced by the lessons that Omegle's failure taught us. The terrible truth about Omegle will continue to influence the discourse about online safety and the obligations of tech businesses to safeguard their users, whether through stronger safety regulations, more responsible design, or other means. Finally, the rise and the end of Omegle serve as a warning about the dangers of online privacy and the necessity of appropriate security measures in digital environments. The platform's inability to sufficiently shield users from exploitation and bad content ultimately proved to be its downfall, even though it previously provided a unique means of connecting with strangers worldwide. It is imperative that digital businesses, authorities, and users themselves take note of Omegle's failures going forward. Our capacity to establish settings that put safety, accountability, and ethical responsibility first will determine how people interact online in the future and make the digital world a safe and secure space.